everyone uh, welcome to the explainable ai in industry tutorial uh, my name is ankur tali and i work at fiddler labs uh, this tutorial is jointly presented by uh, krishnaram kentapuri from amazon uh, sain gaik and varun mittal from linkedin and krishna gade and myself from uh, fiddler labs so the agenda of the tutorial is as follows there are four parts in the first part uh, we'll be going over uh, sort of the introduction and motivation for why we need explainable AI. Uh, in the second part, we'll be covering uh, tech various techniques for explaining uh, the, sort of the foundations of explainable AI, including various techniques for explaining machine learning models, evaluation frameworks for those techniques and so forth. In the third part, we'll be going over various case studies from industry uh, that sort of go through the key challenges and lessons learned in deploying these explainability methods. So we'll be covering case studies from, from LinkedIn, Google, uh, Fiddler Labs, and so on. And then in the in the final part, we'll be going over some open problem, re open research challenges, uh, and conclusions from, from, from all of this work. Okay, so there are actually several motivations for uh, for explainable AI. So let's go through them. Uh, one by one. So, in, so, so, so first, I'll I'll discuss uh, sort of motivation for for explainable AI from the business perspective. Uh, so, so imagine imagine a user applying uh, for a credit line increase to a bank, and this bank uh, makes credit decisions using a black box machine learning model. So, the user applies, the bank consults the model. The model gives a credit lending score of 0.3, which is below the threshold, and so the bank denies the request. Now the user goes like, uh, you know, why was this reject? Why was my application denied? Uh, what can I do to to get to to have my application accepted? Uh, now because the bank made its decision by consulting a black box model it cannot readily answer these questions without really understanding the model. So that's sort of one. Uh, one motivation for why we want to understand these black box models so that we can answer these user questions on, you know, why did the model make a certain decisions? It's not just that. In, in any, for any organization that is deploying black box models, there are several stakeholders uh, that, that sort of care about explaining and demystifying the black box. So the first is the business owner, you know, the, the, the head of lending, for instance, in a bank. Who's, who's, who's responsible for making decisions uh, using this model. You know, that person worries about, you know, can I trust the decisions made by the model? How would this model behave uh, when there's a recession? The customer support agent uh, person goes like, you know, how do I respond to complain, to customer complaints? You know, how do I sort of tell my customers why, why, was, why, why did the model make certain decisions? The IT and operations people go, uh, how do I monitor these models in production? How do I make sure that they are operating in the right manner? You know, what, what checks and safeguards should I put into place? Data scientists uh, worry about sort of iterating on this model. Now they've built their first model, but they want insights into what are the blind spots of this first model? You know, what are the weaknesses of it that, that they can then fix in the second iteration? So they also want to sort of open and peek inside the black box. And then finally, uh, regulators and auditors worry about whether the model is, is fair, unbiased, complying with local legislation, and so on. So several business stakeholders sort of uh, care about opening this black box. Uh, and it's, 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 it's very well known that black box AI models have created several business risks for industry. You know, almost every other week, there is a news article of a large company deploying a black box model which is either found to be non-robust or gender biased or, or unfair in some way, right? So, so from the business perspective, it is, it is very important to have some understanding of how these models operate so that they don't fly, fly blind. Now let's look at the motivation for explainability from a purely model perspective. So suppose I'm a model developer, you know, I'm, I'm someone who builds machine learning models for on a daily basis, then, then what does explainability have to do for me? So here's a motivating example. So this is an object recognition model uh, that predicts that, that when supplied with this particular image, uh, predicts the label clog. Now clog is that kind of a shoe. So, so why is this image labeled as a clog? Because to us humans, this is an image of a boy 
wearing a red jacket and holding binoculars. So why is this called a clog? You know, so this is this is what you would call like a misprediction or a misclassification made by the model. Now, in order to debug this misclassification, you would want to sort of peek inside the model's reasoning. And so, so the model developer is interested in explainability um, in order to understand where the model and why their model is going wrong. And the hope is that with this, by, by looking inside the model and interpreting its, its decisions, the, the, the model developer would be able to would be able to sort of improve the model and sort of have this feedback loop where you know the, he uses data to, to train a model, then look at misclassifications, interpret the misclassifications on why they happen, and then empowered with that in, in light of that interpretation, make either fixes to the data or the model architecture or the loss function uh, in order to build a better model. Uh, another motivation for explainability here is, you know, in certain cases where the model is, where the task is safety critical, such as, you know, self-driving or medical diagnosis, the cost of an error is very high. So here the model developer would like to go one step further and sort of prove certain properties of, uh, of, the, of the underlying model. You know, like in the case of a self-driving car, you'd want to prove something like uh, whenever, the, whenever an op obstacle is detected, the brakes are applied. Uh, so you want to make sure that in all inputs, this sort of invariant is, is always met. And doing that for these black box model would also still re would require looking inside and understanding how it reasons. Another interesting motivation is, you know, suppose you have a model that does phenomenally well on a certain task. You know, take for example, the, the amazing success machine learning models have had on playing Go. Now, uh, an, a natural question here is, you know, how does this, this, this machine learned Go model reason? You know, what are the strategies that it is using internally? So in order to extract these insights, again, you want some form of explanations for the model's prediction. A similar motivation is present in machine learning models uh, for various scientific tasks. So let's say you build, uh, you developed a model for, uh, for detecting whether a drug molecule binds to a certain protein. Now, in order to understand the underlying chemical phenomena, you would want to, you know, look inside this model and see, you know, what parts of the of this large molecule is it relying on to make this uh, protein binding decision, and and perhaps these insights could help you sort of craft newer drug molecules. Okay, and now another huge motivation for explainability is of course regulation. So. Uh, in the United States, for instance, there are several laws against against discrimination. So, it's uh, uh, there are several laws that prohibit discrimination based on protected attributes such as uh, age, sex, race, uh, disability status, and so on. Uh, so, you want to make sure that the models are not using these features or proxies of these features, and at the same time, they are not having uh, disparate impact in the in the sense that the outcomes of the model do not disparately impact, let's say, different racial groups or different genders. So this is another motivation to sort of understand how the model reasons over a large, you know, a large set of data points. A very direct motivator for motivation for, for explainability is GDPR, uh, which was recently put into effect in the Euro by the European Union. Uh, in particular, it's uh, Article 22 explicitly asks for explanations of automated decision-making systems. Uh, so this is, uh, you know, popularly called the right to explanation. Following the GDPR, uh, several states in the United uh, in the United States also have very similar uh, laws in in place that demand uh, that demands these automated algorithms to be explainable. For instance. Uh, the Algorithmic Accountability Act. Uh, there's a similar bill in the states of Illinois, uh, Washington, and Massachusetts. So summing all of these together, sort of the business perspective and the model perspective and the regulation perspective, really what we'd like is explainability in all stages of the AI lifecycle. So the model developer would like explainability during training so that so that he or she can sort of debug their model as it is trained, understand where it's, uh, where the misclassifications lie, why are they happening, and then come up with the right fixes. You'd want um, 
explainability during QA to, to check for compliance, to evaluate the model. Uh, once you have deployed the model, you want explainability for individual predictions that it has made so that you can, uh, you can sort of supply explanations to your to, to all, all your users on why the why certain decisions are made. And then as these models are deployed, you want to monitor them and then and then understand whether whether they are making fair decisions, whether they are robust, uh, whether they are unbiased. And then finally take all of these insights, root cause them, and then take them back to the training so that you can iterate and build a new model. So this is sort of the vision, one way to say it is this is the vision for explainable AI where you would want it in all stages of the AI lifecycle. Uh, this is a really hot area with you know, several techniques uh, that have been proposed for each of these bubbles. You know, there's work in explainability during training, there is work in explainability for explaining predictions, explainability during monitoring and so on. So in the rest of the tutorial, we'll try to sort of uh, convey a fair bit of the explainability research and how it's deployed in industry. So, so with this, we'll move on to the second part of uh, how one can achieve uh, various techniques for achieving explainable AI.